Okay, welcome back to Novice Lumberjack. <laughs> um, next up, and possibly the last one, I don't know, on the looky-loo of the uh, um, Matt House built Trailer Park 346 XP. <laughs> he used, obviously, a Husqvarna 51, um, and what he did da -da -da -da, was he adapted... A Husqvarna 350 uh, cylinder setup and, and piston, I believe. No, he's got a Dolmar piston in there. I can't remember what Dolmar piston he used. But he said no chamber work was done whatsoever, just base cut um, and, and port work. But he's got the full 359 slash 357 XP uh, carburetor and intake. Uh, and air filter set up on here. Looks like he had to cut the uh, the case right here to make room for your throttle or, or your your choke and kill switch set up. But it works as intended. You've got the high idle lock and everything. Uh, this all run ran excellent. Um, the muffler mod, he's just got a hole at the bottom and the hole at the top so it's a put those two together you know it would be a big open hole like that but he's since he's got both of them they're two smaller holes but uh this all ran absolutely excellent uh it was fantastic he had to do a lot of work i'll put it in the video right here to the actual crank cases in order to get that intake to, he had to cut out a spot for the intake to sit down in uh, because on these 55s, the crankcase is up too high for it to fit. But uh, fantastic work as always. Matt does just really tremendously good and tidy work. Uh, his numbers were 77 on, no, 79.5 on the intake, 96 on the exhaust, uh, 120 on the transfers. So the 350 cylinder is a quad port open port setup. And we see that it ran fantastic. This saw took fifth place overall. So it's just shy of being into in the final four. I just barely got beat out by Corey Corp. And it's a magnificent work of art, if you ask me. And I think the best thing about it is the fact that he called it the Trailer Park 346 XP. <laughs> you also got this Magnum sticker on there and, and little, the frog skin, right? Um, excellent setup there. So now this, though, um, though it's an excellent setup, not just anyone can do it. This is, uh, it takes a lot of work and um, you gotta have the parts laying around to, to grab off of a 359, 357. That intake and carburetor setup is, I mean, it's like gold to some people and, and he put it on this thing. So, you know, uh, it was a lot of work, a lot of effort went into it and it's a good running saw, very, very good running saw really takes this chassis up to the next level and you know knowing matt as little as i do i do know that he would probably take this out and actually work it it's actually a good running working saw and uh so i and i i i like that uh don't get me wrong it's a race and it's whoever makes it through the wood fastest but i do give an extra nod to the folks that was able to create a saw that um, can be utilized, you know, like this saw right here is perfectly fine. You can take this out and work it, you know, same thing with Corey's saw. Can't work Richard Flagg's saw, you know, I mean, might be, might be able to, if he got that um, trigger figured out, can't work Dino Joe's saw, you know, do you know on that one? That's a, that's a no, <laughs> there's nothing he's going to be able to do to make that thing an actual work saw, <laughs> nothing at all. But, um, but yeah, it's a really nice setup, and I wanted to give you guys just an, an, an extra little peek at what he's got going on. And uh, it all just hides right under there just perfectly well. 
And again, this saw is a sleeper, you know? There was, there's no real telltale signs, you know, unless if he took off that uh, 346 XP right there, no one would know that this isn't a 51 that's been modified, you know? Uh, it's just super cool, if you ask me. I, I really dig on this, man. This has been a really cool little competition. Again, I mean, I can't say enough thanks. I know a lot of you guys have been really kind and told me thanks for putting on this event, and I appreciate that. It's been a lot of hard work. Uh, but thanks to all you guys actually stepping up and building some really awesome creations for, uh, for this little 55 Rancher series of saw i obviously think that they don't get enough credit um and it's because they're slow you know oh and before i forget matt didn't say anything about a timing advance although i am absolutely certain that it has a good healthy advance it has been my experience that you just can't get these things to rev out unless you advance the shit out of that timing. And I've said it before, so for you guys that have, have, have already heard it and are tired of hearing me say it, I'm sorry. But, you know, there's a lot of new uh, subscribers to the channel that watch this stuff, and uh, they may have not heard me say it. Why did Husqvarna have such a retarded timing numbers um well technically all of them are advanced you know all all of them are it's just by how much well by running a low advance we'll put it that way you're gaining two things two two things one your saw is going to operate at a lower rpm that one's obvious right it's going to operate at a lower RPM, and it's just going to be a standard chug-along good farm saw. That's what these are, you know? And uh, But the other thing that it gives you, and a lot of people don't really think that much on, is um, whenever you start it, it'll start easier. And it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but um, whenever, you're, uh, whenever you're running a high advance, you need to spin it as fast as possible to get it to uh, to fire, not fire properly, at the right time, okay? If you run in a high advance, that means it's going to run best at higher RPMs. Well, you can't pull start it at higher RPMs. So whenever you have a retarded timing advance, then what you're doing is, you can slow spin that engine and it starts easier. So whenever Husqvarna set out and built this saw, racing was nowhere in <laughs> their ideology. They, they, they didn't care one bit. They wanted this thing to start easily and just chug along and cut wood. And it does that. It does that exceptionally well. These things last forever. The only thing that I know of that is a bit of an issue with these saws. Usually whenever you find them burnt up, it's because they had an air leak at the intake. The intake setup is a, a little bit less than desirable, <laughs> let's put it that way. And so, but that's it. They didn't have issues with crank seals. They didn't have issues with the starter braking. Uh, the earlier ones may have had some issue, some small issue with the, the recoils breaking. But they fixed that really quickly whenever they went into the basically the second version, which would be the 51 and then the 55. Um, but uh, but they're pretty stout, great type of saws that you can leave sit on the shelf for two or three years and then come back to it and pull it a few times and it starts up and runs. So this is one of the uh, better built, lasting versions of a Husqvarna chainsaw that you can get. It's a really nice setup. And uh, they last and last and last and last and last and last. 
But you do have to keep your eye on that intake because at some point it will develop an air leak at the intake. And uh, everything has its downfalls for sure, uh, but it's not like these things were prone to air leaks within the first six months. You know, it, it was something that developed over time. And um, yeah, there you have it. The Trailer Part 346 XP. Thanks, Matt.